In this video, I'm going to walk you through some new tools that can be applied to improving your return predictions. And I'll introduce some other tools that uh, could be helpful in other ways as well. We'll be using the same return data we used before, and I won't spend a lot of time going over things we've already done. So we've already done this part of the beginning. What we are going to do now is do some model averaging. What that does is take predictions from different models, average them together, and that average is your new prediction. So I've created a linear model here. This looks similar to what we did before. This is the return, the monthly return, and I'm going to use everything available to predict uh, to predict that return. This is on the training data or the subset of the data. I took only the columns that I need to do the predictions. So that's um, model one. I'm just going to do three models and average across those models. Of course, we can do more models. Um, what you'll see if you try and do some of this yourself is these models that I've set up, these machine learning models are going to last quite a bit longer and because we have 60 variables and a lot of data, you could spend a really long time running these models. And even just going to do the prediction, they could run a long time. So because of that, I've reduced the data set down to a number of columns. So here, just column 2 to column 10 from these training variables that I'm interested in. And here, column 25 to 30. So I'm just taking some small sub subsets of these columns rather than use all of the data. If I did use all of the data, you might expect it to last a while. Similarly, the number of repeats I've reduced and the number of folds I've reduced, that speeds it up as well. Of course, we might expect that the models may not work as well, but we... <laughs> You have to make some sacrifices here. If you wanted to let this run for, I don't know, a week or something, you could use all of the data and not uh, do these sorts of reductions to the data. But here I'm just trying to teach you how this works. So I would be careful running anything like this. And in the homework, I won't set this up in a way that you'll have to run it for a long time. Okay, so we've seen this before. The training data now, I'm training the model on the data. These are going to be both XGBoost models and the X variables. So I created these X variables up here. It's just the X variables. It doesn't include the variable we're trying to predict. And I'm just going to take column 2 to 10 here, column 25 to 30. So that gives me two different models to work with. Estimate those. Then I'm going to create a prediction for each model. So I'm just using the training data set at this point. Use the model that I estimated. This is the linear model. Predict with the training data what the return would be. Same thing with the first XGBoost model and the second XGBoost model. Create these predictions. So the first model averaging approach we're going to use is just average those three predictions. So we have the linear model prediction and these other two XGBoost models, tree models. Average those. This is our predicted average return based on these three models. We could also weight these models depending on how good they fit the data or how much we have confidence in them. I'm going to do a simple way here. We could use other approaches as well. So here I'm going to create the root mean squared error. It's not quite that, but it's pretty close. So I'm just going to do the sum of squared errors and take the square root of that. So this is re the actual return minus the predicted return for the first model. Um, square those errors, then sum them all up, and then take the square root of that. So I do that for each one of these models. Then I'm going to weight them so bigger errors is worse. So if I do 1 divided by the errors, then bigger will make this variable here that I'm creating smaller. So I can then use that as a weight. So if it has smaller errors here, then this will be bigger. So I'll put more weight on it. So then I then to create a weighted average across those, we can turn these all into 0 to 1. So, so all of these weights will sum to 1. 
how we do that is divide by the sum of all of those. So once I have that, so notice I look over here, the weights I've created, which is one divided by these mean squared errors. So this one's about 1%, 1%, they're all fairly close around 1%. Well, if I do this 1% divided by the sum of those, then they're all around 33%. So then if I add these up, then they'll sum up to one. So what that allows me to do is do a weighted average. So here I'm gonna do the weighted average, which is the first prediction times the weight that I've created plus the second prediction times the weight that I've created plus the third prediction times the weight I've created. This is just the definition for a weighted average. So now I have this equal weighted average, which I created up here, which is just summing them and divided by the number of predictions we've made and the weighted average, which is weighted by one over this sum of squared errors or the square root of that sum of squared errors. Okay, so now I have these different predictions. Let's do one more type, and these are called subset regressions. And subset regressions, you can go do one that is called a complete subset regression that can go through every possible variable that you want to include in the model and do separate regressions for each one of those. Well, what we'll do here is do models that only include one variable at a time. Of course, we could expand this, but then it gets more complicated the more we use. And some of other functions can, can do some of that for us, but I want you to learn um, a couple of tools here and the concepts of how these subset regressions work. So first thing we need to do is know how many columns we have. So in here, the number of columns of the X variables, we have 60 X variables that we could use. And so we have, if we only select one at a time, then that means we have 60 possible different regressions we could run. If we then expand that to two combination, combinations of two variables, then we get a different number. And then if we do combinations of three variables, and it keeps expanding so we could do lots of different subsets of the variables to go into our regression. So what I'm going to do here is run a loop that goes through every variable here, all of the X variables, one at a time, does a regression with those X variables, and then creates a prediction with those X variables. And the combination of all of those predictions for each one of those at, a, at, at one at a time is our new prediction. So let me walk through how this works. And this introduces an, the loop, which we, it's a for loop that we could use to loop through any sort of data or, or function or, or sort of set of commands that we're interested in doing. In general, R isn't very good at doing loops. It uses up a lot of data and is fairly slow. So if we can avoid it, we might do something else here. I think it's, it's a good tool to learn, plus it, um, it works intuitively here for us. So here what I'm going to do is the for loop says here are the conditions in, in the parentheses. So this first parenthesis and between the first parenthesis and the second parenthesis, these, this is the condition that's going to use for the for loop. And then what we do in the for loop is within these curly brackets. So the, the first curly bracket to the last curly bracket, this is what will be done in each loop. So for I, so I'm going to, I is the thing that we're going to loop through with, and we're going to use I in, and then here we have to give it the, the sequence of numbers that we're going to use. So here you can do one and the colon, the colon here separates the beginning number from the ending, ending number. So here I'm going to go from one to 60. So I'm going to, each time I go through the loop, I will be one the first time, two the second time, and the last time I will be 60. So it'll go one, two, 60. Um, then we put all the commands in here that we want to have happen as we go through the loops. So the first one is I'm going to take the I'm going to create the data, which is the data frame that combines the return from the data. So here the training data. So I'm gonna use the training data, this return from the training data. I'm going to call it return adjusted again. And you can mess with that and see why, but we need that, otherwise it will call it 
train dollar sign return adjusted. So call it that. And then I'm going to take the X variables data and I'm going to only keep column I. So the first time through this will take the first column of I and because we left this part blank, so blank comma I, this gives us all rows comma one column. So it'll, the first time through it'll be the first column, second time through it'll be the second column, etc. Then I estimate a model that is this using this data that I just created and it is the Y variable and everything else is going to be the x variables. Well, I only have one x variable, so it's going to run it on that column that I have in this data set. So this is, then the rest of this is sort of like things we've done before. So I've estimated this model. I'm going to predict with this model on the training data set. This is going to be what I'm calling the train prediction. And then I'm going to predict on the testing data set what I'm going to call the test prediction. The reason I'm doing these at the same time is to avoid going through another loop when we go to move to the testing data set. So the first time through, that makes sense. We've got this the first time. The second time through, what I'm going to do is take what I already have as a prediction, and I'm going to add on the new prediction. So what I'm doing is adding up all of the predictions. Well, adding up and then dividing by the number that you've made gives you the average. So I'm setting up a way to create an average here as I loop through every time. So the first time through when i is equal to 1, that's the condition for this if statement. If this meets these conditions, then do this part. Else, so notice I end with a curly bracket in the if statement, then else says, if, I, if it's not meeting these conditions, then do this down here. Or you could have an if statement without the if else. Uh, um, I like this if else approach to doing it. So if it's the first time through, then create this prediction. Any other time through, it's going to create a new prediction and add it to the old prediction. Notice then once we come through the second time, so it will take the prediction that we had from the first time through and add to it the second time through's prediction. And then we go through the third time. Well, we're here again. We already have added the first time through and the second time through. Those are both going to be in this prediction variable. Now we're going to add the third prediction um, to this prediction variable. So it's going to do that every time through. Also notice each time we go through, it's overriding this data frame with a new X variable column. It is overriding this estimate, so it's creating a new model. And then um, it'll run through all of this. Once we run this here, what will come out is this train predict and test predict. So we go over here, we've got train predict, test predict, and it has all of the predictions for um, every row, but we've done it for lots of rows, okay? so that many rows for, you know, lots of rows. Then when we divide by n, that gives us now the average. So instead of having a large thing that incorporate that adds up all of the predictions, now we're going to just create the equal weighted average. So we run these. Now train predict and test predict give us these averages. And, um, you know, we could take, we could look at what that looks like. So the average predicted return is 1%. This is 1% per month. So I've created these from this loop and I'm going to put it back in my data set. I'm gonna call this the subset regression. So this is the prediction for the subset regression. So I run this, I get this, now this prediction in my training data set. Now I've got all of these different predictions. The next part is just to evaluate each of those predictions. We've seen this before. So I have this portfolio uh, return setup that I created. I'm going to create a prediction for each of these models. So the first one, I had this prediction, the first one, remember in the data set, I have to call the thing that I'm using to create the returns prediction or PRED. That's because in here, notice it's using PRED. So we need that to be different each time we run this. So because of that, I'm going to call 
this variable that we need, the prediction one, the first time through is going to be prediction one, the second time it's going to be prediction two, and then I'm going to run the portfolio evaluation function to output these portfolio results. So I run that for each of these. Once I have that, I can look at it, look at the results and evaluate them. So let's look at the mean return. Remember that was the first output from the function. And it gives us six outcomes. So the highest mean, if we look through this, is 47.5%. These two are really close. Well, four and five were the um, weighted average version, so, or the average, this is the equal weighted average, this is the weighted average. So the model average does better than all of the, the, than these other three versions. So why does that happen? Well, when we do the first one, this is the linear regression model with all variables, and that does pretty good, 42% mean annual return, which is, way higher than you would actually get, but it's a that sounds really good. Then if we use the XGBoost model, the first one with one subset of variables gives us this. The second one with a different subset of variables gives us this. Well, we should be a little cautious when we're interpreting this is this first one used all of the variables. These ones used a handful of variables. So we, these aren't going to be really great comparisons because in reality you might want to use a much larger set of variables for these but then it would cause it to run a long time. Then when we average them well notice it is better than the first one well some of these have noise in their predictions or all of them have noise in their predictions and some what that means if your prediction is better once you average them that means that you um, that this one was too high sometimes, this one was too low, and so they offset each other or the other way around. And so the combination of them does a better job forecasting. It removes some of the bad forecasts by and improves it just a little bit. And notice the weighted average does slightly better than the equal weighted average. Okay, so that's fine. Of course, these are all in sample, so we should be careful with that. Then the subset regression is sort of similar to these other ones and we should again be careful because this is um, each variable by itself. Maybe if we had a bunch of variables in there together, let's say we did a subset regression with three variables each, then you know maybe that's going to do a little bit better. But what it does say is that doing one at a time and averaging those doesn't do as well as doing these separate models and then averaging those. So another possibility would be we could take this last model and average it with these other models and potentially we could do better. All right, so that gives us some idea of what's going on there. Let's look at the sharp ratio. So remember the sharp ratio is the mean divided by the standard deviation. Oh, I think before I said these are monthly returns. These are annualized returns. So the monthly return to times 12, so this is an annual 42% return. So the sharp ratio is bigger is better. So the first model, the, the linear regression model that includes all variables has the highest sharp ratio. And these, the two averages did better before in the mean, but their variance did worse, the, the denominator. So their sharp ratio is actually lower when we do the model averaging. So in terms of the mean, the, the risk return trade-off, we're best off using this first model that uses all of the variables. Notice the sharp ratios of these two are not very good. The sharp ratio of the last one is slightly better, so it's not horrible. It's not the worst one, but it's also not fantastic either. So, you know, we would have to mess around with this to, some more to try and figure out if we alter some of these things, would we do better? So the big question is what happens when we move to the testing sample? We run all of these, but notice I need to redo the predictions so that I have prediction one, two, and three, and the average predictions, 
and the portfolio evaluation. So I'm just repeating all of that I had before, but using the testing data set. But remember, we're using the training data models on the testing data set. All right, let's evaluate what happens with these ones. So again, the mean return. Notice they all are smaller. That's generally the case. We, we should fit the data fairly well when we're using training data. It doesn't work quite as well when we move to testing data. The linear model with all of the variables, 24%. This is now clearly the best still. Notice it doesn't, um, none of the others sort of catches up to it. These ones are even worse than they were before, 2% and 4%. The average now is not very close to the full model. So even though it worked a little bit on the training data, model averaging doesn't help us at all here. That is primarily because these two did not work very well in the testing data. And partly that may come from the fact that we did not account for overfitting very well. So remember when we mess around with some of these machine learning methods, one of the ways to reduce overfitting is to introduce some other controls, which we've talked about before, or we could increase the number here so we can increase the number of folds and the number of repeats and or introduce some of the other controls and perhaps we would prevent overfitting the training data so that when we see these they're not horrible but here they've really hurt our predictions and so our averages are worse of course really what you want to do is come up with your best possible models and then average those and then our last one so our subset regression does better than these two averages, but it's still not quite as good as the first one. So potentially what we might want to consider is some sort of combination of, of the first one and maybe learning to improve this last one or learning to improve these two. All right, so more to mess around with. The reason we do all of this is because we don't really know how these models are going to work. And in particular, as we move to new data, if you were going to go trade this, there's significant uncertainty about what your model would be like. But again, we have to work through some of the kinks of the models and make sure the models work really well. And we will do some of that on the homework. But again, it's, um, you know, it takes a long time to run all of this stuff. So we'll limit it somewhat. So, all right, good luck with this.